What's going on guys? So by now you've likely seen the subtle changes that were made to the 2022 model Ford Super Duty that really consist of some interior technology changes that I think a lot of people may have expected. But we're going to go over some of those. Hang tight. I'll be right back. So for those of you who follow Ford, you'll probably know that the previous generation Super Duty had a lifespan of about 17 years before it underwent a significant overhaul. Now that's not to say that during that period of time they didn't constantly improve the design and add a lot of different changes from the front end to the back end to the overall size, the ride height, the suspension, all sorts of things changed along the way, but they were incremental evolutionary changes. But in today's world of trucks and its highly competitive nature between all the different major manufacturers, you really can't go that long without significant changes to the truck. So a good way of understanding that is by looking at the current generation Super Duty. It appeared in 2017 as a complete platform change from the previous generation, which again spanned like 17 years of life without any major overhaul. Well, in 2017, they decided to go all aluminum and really match a lot of the characteristics and features of the F-150 in terms of the overall cab design. Well, in 2020, you saw the first mild change. It was essentially a mid-cycle refresh, pretty much by simply modifying the front grille and headlights, which improved them significantly, and then also making some changes to the taillights and the tailgate. The engine also got a pretty big update and produces more power and horsepower, and I still think it's class leading in terms of overall horsepower and torque. But all that being said, the truck is still largely the same truck that was released in 2017. So just like the subtle changes that were made between 2011 and 2016, essentially the previous generation or the latest iteration of the previous generation of Super Duty, a lot of the changes were made in a very subtle way, such as the headlights, the taillights, and subtle things about the interior, like the navigation screen got larger and they changed to a newer version of Sync several times in that truck. So if you look at the 2017 through now 2022 version of the Super Duty, you're going to start to see that same trend. 2017 was the initial release, 2020 was the first kind of mild update to the exterior of the truck. Now in 2022, it's the first mild interior changes where they've added the larger navigation screen. However, most of the other features have remained largely the same, but they've again modified the dash area to accommodate the larger screen and some of the newer touch feel items that you're seeing in the new F-150 as well. So something else that you see Ford do, as well as all other major manufacturers whenever they do these mid-cycle refreshes, is they usually introduce some type of new appearance package or some new color option, as well as possibly eliminate some of the color options that are available. Now they do this because because again, they wanna keep the lineup fresh. And one of the easy ways to do this is to eliminate or add colors and add appearance packages. In the case of the 2022 Super Duty, they've added a new Lariat Sport appearance package that gives you all the color matched bumpers, mirrors, grill, the chrome exhaust tips, and black platform running boards, and additional choices in terms of the interior, such as Baja colored leather, or the Navy Pier, the light slate interior for limited models, and Atlas Blue as far as the paint color for the outside. Now, whenever you look at the power plant, generally there could be some small changes, especially if one of the competing brands has made some subtle changes or improved their horsepower and torque, but sometimes you don't see much change there if they are class leading or they're in a position where they don't feel they need to make any changes. So with Ford, whenever you look at the powertrain of the 2022 model, it's gonna be the same. The 7.3 liter V8 is going to have 430 horsepower, 475 pound-feet of torque. The third generation 6.7 liter power stroke is gonna have 1,050 pound-feet of torque and 475 horsepower. Now, gooseneck towing for that truck in its maximum towing configuration, which is going to be a regular cab long bed two-wheel drive truck is gonna be 37,000 pounds, and that's gonna be for a 450. Maximum towing for fifth wheel is going to be 32,500 pounds, and that's usually limited by the hitch assembly itself. Now, conventional towing of 24,200 pounds is still best in class, 
and the maximum payload capacity of 7,850 pounds, again, with a very, very specific configuration of truck, is still there as well. All right, let's go back and talk about some of the interior changes that were made to the truck, specifically up front in terms of technology and entertainment. So most people are gonna see right off the bat that they went to a new landscape-oriented 12-inch center touchscreen with Sync 4. And this is actually standard on Lariat and above model trim packages, which is really cool. One of the other things that they've done, and you may not catch this right at first glance, is they've removed the climate control features from the touchscreen and they've made those physical buttons and knobs below the screen, which I think is a brilliant idea. I also think they probably should have made some of those features redundant on the touchscreen. However, I love the fact that all the AC controls are controlled through knobs and buttons as opposed to having to go through different touchscreens just to get to those functions. Now, a few months ago, I had the opportunity to spend some time with a Ford rep in a F-150 equipped with Sync 4, and I had an opportunity to see how the system actually functions. And it's quite impressive, to be honest. So one of the biggest gripes I've had against RAM is their use of a 12-inch screen, but essentially making it almost look and feel like it's this large smartphone or iPhone screen. And that's not a bad thing when you're talking about technology, but it can kind of become a bad thing if you're talking about distraction while you're trying to navigate through different screens to get to different options or items because you're looking at the screen, you're swiping across it, you're making all these major shifts to the screen so you can get to what you're looking for and it can be distracting at times. I've brought this up in several videos. With the Ford Sync 4 system, they seem to have gone at it with a different approach and they've made it a very intuitive system in the sense that things are naturally where they should be and it's easier to navigate around with less icons and less things that you have to select to get to the screens you might be looking for. And they probably did that in response to RAM so they could essentially declutter the screen and make it a little bit more user friendly. But I was pretty impressed with it considering the fact that I'm not really a big fan of these huge screens. I'm not a fan of tiny screens. I kind of like that eight inch average, maybe nine inch screen. And I really liked the 8.4 inch Uconnect size in terms of how it works on the Ram trucks. 12 inch is getting a little bit large, even though it's definitely gonna help you in terms of utilizing your cameras and some of the other features you might be looking for on the screen whenever you are using it. That being said though, it is really cool to see the new technology being integrated into these vehicles. I sometimes wish that you had the option to remove some of the technology if you didn't want it, even on these higher trim vehicles, but I understand why they do it this way because it makes sense from a financial perspective not to have 20 different interiors. Anyways guys, I'd love to know your thoughts on the new 2022 Ford Super Duty, what you like about the changes, if you agree or disagree with me on the navigation screen size, I'd love to know that as well but i'm going to wrap this video up i hope you enjoyed it if you haven't had a chance please take a moment subscribe to my channel give me a thumbs up and we'll talk to you again very soon